Uh, while I appreciate um, you're, you're a sheep breeders, uh, part of our, our, our brief is to work in the beef space, and uh, we have a, a program uh, around uh, developing beef genetics. And um, no better person to uh, just give you a brief overview is uh, Steve Miller. Uh, Dr. Steve Miller is a senior scientist with the animal genomics team at Invermay and is involved in developing beef genetics programs with beef and lamb genetics. Dr. Miller arrived from Canada in December 2013, uh, where, he's, where he was the director for the Centre of Genetic Improvement of Livestock at the University of Guelph. Dr. Uh, Miller holds adjunct faculty appointments at the Universities of Guelph, Alberta, and is an honorary scientist with the University of Queensland. He really only really came here for the weather, uh, but um, <laughs> uh, Steve. Thanks, Graham. I think it'd be interesting to get a show of hands, your sheep breeders, but who buys bulls or sells bulls or deals in bull breeding in some way. So. Yeah, quite a few. Uh, I'm going to give you a bit of an overview. We do have a poster um, around beef, so have a chance to catch up with you individually with some, um, some more information. What you'll see here is there's actually a lot of similarity between what you've just heard, what's going to happen on the sheep side, and the economics for sheep as well as what's um, planned for, for beef. That's probably because this, the, the same people that wrote the proposal for sheep also wrote the proposal for beef, I think, is probably a, a large part. But the issue, a lot of the issues are, are exactly the same here in New Zealand for both beef and sheep. Uh, so what, what we're interested in, basically, is can we um, identify uh, basically productive cows for, um, for maternal conditions here in, in New Zealand? If we look at, we had a, we've had a couple meetings, and I recognize some of the breeders, uh, David's here, and others that uh, were at the meetings in Wellington, uh, identifying with the industry, you know, what are, what are the issues that uh, we need to address? And basically, cows that are going to survive and perform in, in hill country in New Zealand for beef cows is important. So what traits are those? Those are traits related to things like fertility, longevity, survival in uh, beef cows. At the same time, producers are saying, yeah, but our beef eventually um, hits... Uh, hits a packer and, and ends up perhaps overseas somewhere. And meat quality and, and carcass traits are also important. So if we, if we push just for maternal traits in beef cows, what about, the, what about the carcass? We need to address that as well. And really, it's, it's uh, so we're interacting a lot with the stud sector, but we want uh, genetics that are going to perform in the commercial environment, wherever that might be in New Zealand, in this case, uh, the hill country. So that's very similar to what Michael was just describing in beef. I've just got this one slide around uh, what we might call dairy beef, and it was certainly recognized by everyone at the industry workshops that, well, let's face it, you know, the dairy, the dairy contributes a lot of beef to the beef that leaves the country, uh, so we can't, um, can't ignore that. So what are the types of traits that we might be interested in in, in dairy cross beef? Obviously calving ease and gestation length, the dairy farmer is uh, mostly interested in that, and then further down the chain, growth rate and carcass quality would be important. Uh, where we kind of run into a wall in a way is uh, we've got dairy breeder or dairy farmers buying bulls to get cows pregnant, and the value of that bull is basically 30 calving ease records around in there if you, if you want to be harsh about it, uh, and and after that and after that he's basically not involved with those animals anymore. So the challenge really is uh, identifying where we can influence the dairy beef, and I'll come back to that uh, a little bit um, a little bit later. So. The plan involves uh, genomics. I think you've seen on the cheap side, genomics has been a huge game changer for you here. And so we want to get some of those tools rolled out for beef cattle or help in that way. Uh, economics and indices, extension and adoption. And finally, I'll talk about what we're doing around maternal, maternal genetics. And when we say maternal genetics, we're really just trying to distinguish it from dairy, dairy cross genetics. So maternal includes, would include carcass traits, but really your traditional maternal beef breeds like Angus and, and Hereford. So what might we do in genomics? Uh, basically, to be successful with uh, some kind of a program in genomics, we're going to have to collaborate. That's, that's basically what you'll see from overseas as well. Uh, there's uh, a need to combine resources. We need large populations, and there's lots of things happening overseas and other populations. And this, at the same time, we need gene genotypes on New Zealand animals and uh, genotypes that would then be relevant to our populations here in New Zealand. So that's... Um, so one of the things we got in, involved in right away is uh, 
something called the Thousand Bull Genomes Project, which, which is an effort to sequence, well, originally a thousand bulls around the world. Uh, there are well over a thousand bulls now, and quite a few of those are actually uh, beef, beef cattle. So we've contributed uh, through sequencing 29, sequence on 29 different bulls from New Zealand. And uh, there's just a picture of one bull there, and I can talk to you more about that around the poster, but there's a uh, 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 New Zealand Angus bull there that was um, put forward by the Angus Association that was sequenced. So this project is run out of Melbourne, but by contributing New Zealand genetics to that program, we get access to all the sequence that's there. And there's lots of sequence in that database that's relevant to, uh, to New Zealand as well. We're going to have two uh, projects. One is around uh, genomics of fat composition, basically healthfulness of uh, fatty acids. It, it ties in nicely with uh, New Zealand grass-fed beef, which I think is a real point of difference for, for New Zealand. And that's, a, that's basically a population that's already been collected through research, um, through ag research over the years. So we're just adding some genotyping to that and collaborating with um, colleagues around the world that are also working in the same area. And finally, Abacus is going to be spearheading a project looking at how can we apply genomics in what we might call small genetic populations. So, uh, you know, in your sheep population, you've got essentially big populations. For your composite populations, multi-breed, it's a wide genetic base. For breeds, for example, like Wagyu, um, that's actually a very narrow genetic base. And so the tools and techniques we might use in that scenario is quite a bit different. It could be different. Uh, we may be able to get some success for some of our uh, smaller breeding populations as well. So we're going to look at developing, uh, work towards developing some new tools for, for breeders, we hope, uh, and essentially working with um, commercial records. So Anna Boyd stood up uh, here earlier, so people often wear more than one hat, so Anna's out there looking for your uh, sire samples for uh, sheep, but she's also working on the beef side and going on farm and collecting, uh, helping to get us started in terms of phenotyping beef cows, uh, for body condition score, fertility, collecting DNA samples to build this uh, reference population. So through DNA, we plan to um, be able to link these herds, and we'll come back to that. Just around, over, so very similar to what Peter was describing, I think. So Tim Byrne is leading the area around economics and indices from, from Abacus Bio. You know, the breeders, we had our uh, meeting with the breeders at the uh, uh, beef sessions that, that we've had. And I think they're acknowledging, you know, the, the, we're getting our breeding values come from breed plan from Australia. Yeah, the, you know, the likely uh, more yearling weight means more yearling weight. And for, for example, maybe more fat depth means more fat depth. But what's the best balance for New Zealand between more growth rate, um, bigger cows, smaller cows? And that's how uh, Tim Byrne could actually get involved and maybe come up with economic indices specifically for New Zealand for the different breeds and, and roles that the beef cow has here in, uh, in New Zealand, as well as identifying new changes, for example, around things like um, prime beef and beef EQ that's being rolled out to producers as changing the way people get paid for beef in terms of meat quality, as well as new technologies, for example, like sex semen. And finally, around the dairy beef, I think this is, this is our next step for dairy beef, is doing the economic analysis and identifying, you know, where the investment should be made that could uh, have an impact on dairy beef. So that's um, step one um, for dairy beef. Around extension adoption, obviously we want to help breeders breed better bulls and how can they best apply the tools to improve uh, gain at their level. But also I think number two here is probably the most important, and that is the guys that are out there buying bulls, uh, the more they understand genetic technologies and how to apply them, then they're going to be demanding better genetics from seed stockers. So basically when the commercial farmer's demanding uh, better bulls and better uh, information, then the uh, seed stock producers have to, uh, have to adapt. I'm going to flip over this slide. It's a, it's a busy one, but uh, Jason Archer, who's here, is going to talk a bit later about uh, what we're doing around progeny tests. So we're setting up some progeny tests, a progeny test, uh, both Hereford and Angus um, cattle right through to carcass traits. And, uh, Jason will talk a bit about that. What we're directly involved with with Anna is what we might call a, a tier two progeny test. And this is getting out to commercial farms and collecting cow longevity, body condition score, weight data on cows, storing the DNA away for good reasons like John McEwen mentioned. You know, if we're out there getting measurements, um, now's the time to put the DNA away on those animals. And really we, we want um, to link our kind of commercial data on cows back to our tier one 
uh, progeny test, which is going to tie into uh, tie into carcass. And Jason's prepared this stylized representation here. This is basically survival curve for two different bulls. Uh, you know, the green bull there is daughters are lasting longer in the herd, and that's essentially what we uh, desire from our beef genetics. So what are some outcomes? You know, we want to evaluate maternal performance and survival uh, under commercial conditions. That's, that's the goal. We're looking at some potentially some new breeding values. Haven't talked about antrofollicle counts. Antrofollicle counts you can measure uh, basically with an ultrasound um, rectal scan for uh, kind of like a pregnancy diagnosis, but we're going to evaluate this technology. Is, is it related to, um, to fertility? If it is, it would be a, a great measure for breeders to predict fertility earlier in females. Uh, I talked about cow condition score and cow stability. Potentially could roll out as new breeding values. And we want to relate those maternal characteristics to um, carcass traits. So we want, if we're going to develop genomic tools by getting data on New Zealand animals, um, how can we develop tools that are relevant to New Zealand, as well as, Jason will talk a bit more about it, I imagine, but we're going to link our progeny test work here with what's happening in, in Australia. So in Australia, there is uh, um, progeny tests underway, and, and there is actually New Zealand genetics have already been shipped over to, uh, to link those two groups. And finally, we want to demonstrate the value of genetics to commercial beef producers. Thank you.